Hello, how are you? My name is Robert, and from now on I thank you for watching this video, in which I am going to explain how power quality analyzers measure and record, especially those of Class A according to the standard, IEC 61000-4-30. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Let's start looking at all of these concepts. Power quality analyzers allow obtaining many electrical parameters, such as voltages, currents, cosine of phi or DPF, powers, energies, harmonics, unbalances, etc. To calculate all these parameters, power quality analyzers must digitize the waveforms of the voltages and currents, which are ultimately the signals that reach the analyzer through the test leads and probes. The ideal waveform of the voltage is sinusoidal with a fixed frequency normally of 50, 60 or 400 Hz, and peak amplitudes that vary depending on the countries, and for example in Europe, the nominal voltage in single-phase systems is 230 volts. Although sometimes voltage waveforms, due to disturbances in the networks can deviate from that ideal sine waveform. The waveforms of the currents depend on the type of loads connected to the network. In general, linear loads will also give rise to currents with a sine wave shape. Nonlinear loads will result in distorted currents. In this example we can see the voltages and currents associated with a three-phase rectifier. The voltages are more or less sinusoidal, however, the associated currents are highly distorted. In any case, we are talking about waveforms that, in theory can take infinite values between the limits of normal operation, that is, we are considering the analog world. However, power quality analyzers and any instrument in general that offers a numerical value, is obliged to work with a limited number of values, that is, they work in the digital world. This means that the instruments must digitize the waveforms to convert them to numerical values, as shown in the figure. As we can see, the analyzers sample the waveform at a certain speed, obtaining numerical values for the voltage and current at certain times. In the case of the Fluke 435 Series 2, if we look at its technical specifications, we can see that the equipment uses a 16-bit analog to digital converter, with 4 channels for voltages and 4 channels for currents. The maximum simultaneous sampling rate for waveforms is 200,000 samples per second. This very fast speed is mainly used for event detection. For the recording of effective values or RMS we have that the equipment obtains 5,000 samples every 10 cycles at 50 Hz, that is, 5,000 samples every 200 milliseconds, or what is the same, 25,000 samples per second, according to the IEC 61000-4-30 standard. The effective values are calculated using the formula that we see in the image, that is, the square root of the mean of the squared values of the samples taken during a given period of time. As I have already mentioned, many times we call the effective value as the RMS value, meaning root mean square. As we can see from the formula, the RMS value is not an instantaneous value, it requires sampling the waveforms over a specified period of time. Therefore, it would be possible to calculate different effective values depending on the number of samples taken, depending on how they are grouped, etc., which could lead to slightly different values. To avoid this type of situation, the International Standard IEC 61000-4-30 defines the measurement procedures that power quality analyzers must use, depending on their class, in order to study and quantify the power quality electrical parameters. This standard defines the concept of effective half-cycle value. In this case, the effective RMS value is calculated with the samples taken during a complete cycle, starting with the zero crossing of the wave, and this value is updated every half cycle. As we can see in the image, the analyzer takes the waveform samples obtained during a complete cycle, that is, 20 milliseconds for a frequency of 50 Hz and 16.6 milliseconds for 60 Hz networks, and calculates its associated effective value. Since the analyzers must record the data, this process of sampling and calculating the RMS value must be repeated continuously. To avoid the possibility of a small missing period of time between two consecutive RMS values, what the analyzer does is start the second calculation before the previous calculation has finished, in this way the measures of effective values are obtained every 10 milliseconds, 
even if each value is sampled for a full cycle. In this way, dead times between two consecutive effective values are avoided. Here we can see the calculation of a third RMS value. In short, RMS measurements are obtained every 10 milliseconds, even though each value is sampled for 20 milliseconds. This is the concept of URMS half-cycle voltage, that appears in much documentation. On the other hand, the standard IEC 61000-4-30, for Class A analyzers, states that for recording basic measurements like voltages, harmonics and unbalances, it should be used an interval of 10 cycles for networks of 50 Hz, and 12 cycles for networks of 60 Hz. In the case of the Fluke 430 Series 2 analyzers, to obtain the effective values over 10 12 cycles, 5,000 samples are taken, that is, 25,000 samples per second. However, this does not mean that later with the software, in a trend graph we could see RMS values every half cycle, or even every 10 cycles. The standard IEC 61000-4-30 also introduces the concept of aggregation intervals, basically, this standard defines three time intervals, one of three seconds, another one of 10 minutes and the last one of two hours. These intervals allow compacting the data by means of obtaining the maximum, minimum and average values obtained using those 10 or 12 cycles. In this way, for the aggregation interval of 3 seconds, 15 consecutive measurements of 10 or 12 cycles would be taken and from them we can get the maximum value, the minimum value and the average value of those 15 RMS values. For the 10 minute interval, 10 by 60 by 5 equals 3000 consecutive measurements of 10 or 12 cycles would be taken, and from them we would obtain the maximum, minimum and average value again. Finally, the 2 hour interval is calculated based on the values obtained from 12 intervals of 10 minutes. These are the aggregation intervals proposed by the IEC 61000-4-30. In addition to these measurement intervals proposed by the standard, Fluke 430 series analyzers, allow to define custom aggregation intervals, from 250 milliseconds up to 2 hours, in this way we can study records in more detail for special situations, not just power quality. For this reason, if we open a data file with power log software, supplied with the Fluke 430 power quality analyzer, and for simplicity we select to display only the voltage trend for phase 1, then we will see three graphs in red, green and black colors. These graphs correspond to the graphs that are obtained with the maximum, minimum and average values respectively, obtained for each elapsed aggregation interval. Quite logically, the red graph of maximum values is in the upper side, the green graph of minimum values is in the lower end, and the black graph of average values is between the trends of maximum and minimum values. Thanks to the three selection boxes that appear at the top of the screen, it is possible to select the graph that interests us most, depending on the problem we are studying, for example, we can select the graph of maximum values if we are studying over voltages, or we can select the graph of minimum values if we are interested about interruptions or voltage drops. If we make a record according to the European standard EN 5160, for which the aggregation interval should be 10 minutes, if we zoom in until a trend graph is enlarged enough, we will see that voltage changes occur, precisely, every 10 minutes. In case the analyzer does not detect any anomaly in the network, the selected aggregation interval will give us the temporal resolution between the values of the trend graphs. However, if the Fluke 430 analyzer detects an event, and in this case we must remember that the analyzer uses the RMS values of half a cycle, the Fluke 430 analyzer will be able to display trend graphs for each event with a much higher temporal resolution, down to 25 milliseconds between consecutive points. In case of an event, the 430 analyzer can also save the waveforms associated with that event, and in this case the time between two consecutive points in the waveform will be less than a millisecond, providing you an incredible resolution. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. In this way, we have seen how power quality analyzers, especially those of class A like the Fluke 435, measure and record, according to the IEC 61000-4-30, and especially, we have learned about the aggregation intervals. I hope this video has been of interest, and helps you, on a practical level, when you have to make a record and then analyze the data. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, don't forget to drop a like, 
so that I can know that you liked it, and I can program new videos on this topic. In a next video we will see how the automatic registration mode of the Fluke 435 analyzer works, and we will look precisely at how it manages the aggregation interval, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon.